Hey guys, it's Bishozzi here, and welcome to my newest series here on TW 2020. Now this series, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail of course, is going to be with Australia Pro Wrestling, APW. Now it kind of makes sense, obviously I'm Australian, uh, I've never done a series in Australia, on YouTube anyway. I did do personal saves in Australia with DIW and APW on 2016. However, we're going to be running a small series here. It's going to start off, well, we're a, a small company. Uh, I do have some plans because obviously I, I kind of know how Australia works in the C-verse. Uh, but anyway, we are going to be James J. McMinster. And as you can see, he is a millionaire businessman who created APW to essentially be, I would consider it the WWF of Australia back in the old territory days, if you want a real life comparison. Basically, as you can see, he bought out all these small companies that were dotted around the country's east coast and combined the best talent to form a marketable package. Um, but yeah, unfortunately his plan was crushed as just two years later, Raw debuted at a national TV deal uh, as they're pretty much on, well, I think the ASN network actually owns the whole Raw company. So therefore they had a national TV deal and uh, basically just started raiding APW. So APW still finds itself as a, a relatively small company. Uh, it is obviously second, maybe you could probably consider it third uh, in Oceania, which is of course the new Australia region in the game, uh, which makes a lot more sense, I would say. But anyway, now the first thing I wanna show you is events and TV. Now we have 12 pay-per-views uh, and that's it. There's no TV show. Uh, and unfortunately, there is no broadcaster that will negotiate uh, because I think you need something like 32 popularity is the minimum that one of those broadcasters, and I think it's in four regions. And if we look at the size of APW here, we do have 42 popularity in New South Wales. However, we only have 16 in Queensland and 16 in Victoria, and then only a measly eight in South Australia. Uh, the other three regions being Western Australia, Tasmania, and New Zealand are all at zero. Um, so we're small, which is essentially the regional size if you wanted to make a comparison from TW 2016. Now, with all of that being said, we are not gonna be able to get a broadcaster. However, the way I want to progress APW is to try out something that I didn't do on my other series, bit of a shameless plug there, Black Canvas Grappling. If you haven't watched that, I do recommend going and checking that out if you have some more free time. But that is for us to invest in launching our own broadcaster. And this is the first thing I wanna do in this episode. Um, I think I want to do commercial. And I say that because, I mean, we're not gonna go big. We're gonna, probably gonna go very small to begin with. And as you can see, it's only gonna cost 60,000. I think we have 125,000 in the bank and it's gonna be 2,240 per month in running costs. Uh, we're not gonna have a focus, I don't think, as none of those really, I mean, mainstream maybe, but don't really wanna limit us to, to being mainstream. Either way, I think e either commercial or pay-per-view is probably the, the best option. And I think commercial is probably better, purely because I think that we will just pretty much create a weekly TV show from the get-go to try and compete with Raw. So let's let's launch it. It's gonna be, I guess, it's gonna be called the APW Network. I mean, I could probably come up with something a little bit more creative than that, but at this point, let's just launch it. Yes, all right. So we're down to 65,000 already, but that's perfectly fine because we now have, well, we have to go to broadcasting anyway. Uh, we'll go to this way. Uh, and then of course we need to basically set up a deal with our own broadcaster to negotiate a new deal for events. So let's get that booked in. 
And uh, we actually have a zero minimum quality expected, so that's pretty cool. And again, I'm still kind of learning. We're still in the beta phase of TW 2020. Um, but yeah, I guess that kind of just makes sense to do everything normally as it's based. So very small. We're not going to get massive increases in popularity, but at least it's going to give us coverage across all the regions in Oceania, which I think is going to be pretty beneficial. Uh, the next thing we want to do is go to events and TV. And we want to add a TV show. Now, as far as a name goes, I have a pretty fitting name and it's going to be This Is War. Maybe this means war. I don't know. I'm still pretty torn, but I want it to have war in the title. And what I mean by that is APW has a hostile view of Raw. Hence, you know, they've taken a lot of their superstars away from them. And uh, this is going to be APW's proper push to try and get, you know, up to Raw's level and potentially beat out Raw. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. I'm not sure if you... Do we want an hour? Maybe an hour and a half? Let's stick with one hour for now. All right, so there we go. The pay-per-views are two hours long. So we'll have that be one hour. And again, we've got to go back into broadcasting. And we'll negotiate a deal for This Is War. And again, everything is nice and easy. And now This Is War is actually on a broadcaster. So that's, that's perfect. Exactly how we kind of want to start this series off. Uh, the next thing we want to do is, I guess, go through the roster a little bit. Let's go like this. And let's go by perception, first of all. Now, we only have one major star. And that is Christian Girard. Uh, as you can see, he's only 28 years old. So the fact that he's that young, I think if we can keep him, he's obviously going to be, I would say, our biggest star probably for a long time to come. Got 47 popularity, which I think is quite a decent amount higher than anyone else. Uh, he's currently not the champion. We'll go into the champions in a second. Uh, but just looking at his stats here, if we go into skills... You can see that he's, he's actually pretty good in, in regards to, you know, top level, maybe not top level C versus wrestlers, but as far as Australia goes, he's pretty high up there. I would say he's definitely above average uh, when you compare him to raw, raw talent. Now, if we go into stars, we have a few more in here. We've got Dingo Divine, who is 39, pretty old. Uh, 41 popularity on him is pretty good. Um, similar type of wrestler, really. Very, very similar. Probably actually a little bit better in the ring. Obviously, 39 years old. You would kind of expect him to be just that little bit better. A bit more well-rounded as well, especially in the ring. We then have Mitch Bryson, who I think is our announcer. Um, does have pretty good announcing, from what I can tell. We go down here. He's got 72, which I think is, again... Pretty good, above average, and what we sort of expect. Up next, we've got Scotty Hampstead, who is, I think, currently our, yeah, APW Commonwealth Champion. And the Commonwealth Championship is the top main event title. Uh, as you can see, he does have 74 brawling, 42 popularity in New South Wales as well. So he's, he's a champion for a reason. He does have a pretty good manager, uh, being Victor Goliath, the next guy here who is a manager. As you can see, Victor's got a lot of overness, good popularity, uh, but he has really, really good entertainment skills. Uh, and he does have a, a stable for himself as well. I think it's called Goliath Injuries, uh, Industries, sorry. Does it say it anywhere here? Oh, Goliath Global, yeah. Similar, I was pretty close from, uh, from just going back on my own memory. The Goliath Global for him. Uh, we then have well-known stars in the company. A lot more full in, re in regards to the rest of the roster. Sort of like our mid-carders. Uh, but I guess some of them you would probably consider upper mid-card as well. Uh, so first we've got Alex McQuarrie. Um, he also looks pretty good. He's only 33, so he's another guy that's probably going to be used quite a bit by me and probably pushed up into at least being a star. Uh, Donovan Boone, I believe, is in a tag team, from what I can remember. 
Uh, he also looks pretty good. Really good brawling on him as well. And solid enough basics. We've got Frank Michiello. Michiolo. And he is, I think, the color commentator. I think he has 72 as well. Yeah, from what I saw when I was setting this up earlier. Uh, we then have Hate Monger, who is one half of our Apocalypse tag team. Um, also, I think, managed by uh, Goliath Global as well, or in the Goliath Global stable. We then have Lenny Williams, who used to be one of the top APW guys back on 2016. Uh, he is now retired, so I think he's going to be a road agent. Uh, I'm not too sure exactly what he does, so that'll be interesting. But he does have 78 psychology, so I'm hoping he is a road agent backstage. Uh, we then have Lone Shark, who is a former Zen roster member. Um, really talented, really, really talented guy. Just hasn't really got Nova. Now 34 as well. He's, uh, as you can see, really good technical, pretty good brawling, and then very good aerial and flashiness. Another another pretty high up the list guy for me, and I think we'll try and push him as well. Uh, along with this next guy as well, Massacre, who is also formerly from Zen. Um, he's currently our mid-card champion, the APW Australian champion. And uh, he's he's pretty good as well. Lacks a little bit in maybe his in-ring skills, but apart from that, he's also pretty good. Uh, we then have another manager in Max Forbes. Some relatively good entertainment stats. Um, not actually sure who he managed. Okay, so he's got a new, a newcomer on the roster, Leon Namath, who I'm assuming is probably a little bit lower down in regards to the pushes. We then have Nighthawk. Never really been a fan of Nighthawk, and he never really sort of impressed me. So I'm not too sure if we're going to use him too much, but we'll have to wait and see. He's kind of got the Ultimate Warrior face paint, I guess. And then a Pookie Possum who, as you can see, is a former Raw star, uh, but he was released. So he does have a little bit of popularity across all the regions, which I think, you know, it could be an interesting thing if we decide to venture out a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll do that, but apart from that, really good uh, basics. Um, he's, he's, he's kind of an all-rounder, and he's pretty good at what he does, I would assume. I think he's also part of a tag team, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's also pretty expensive at 190 per appearance. We then have Richie Fox. Looks pretty good. Um, six foot six, so yeah, interesting. We might we might push him as well. He's actually got really good entertainment stats there and 72 star quality. Got Rusty Mills up next, who also looks pretty, pretty goddamn good. Yeah. Again, really good microphone stats for Rusty Mills there as well. I think he is part of our one of our top tag teams. We then have Stephanie Drucker, who I think is a manager as well. Yeah, so she manages Richie Fox and Pookie Possum in a tag team. And then finally, we have Warmonger as well, the other half of the Apocalypse tag team. Okay, so I'm not going to go over the rest of the roster. We'll, you'll go, you guys will get used to them, you know, fairly soon. Uh, but let's get booking. I want to start booking. I want to see what we're actually going to do. Let's have a look at the titles first of all. As you can see, 29 Prestige for the Australian title. We then have the Commonwealth Championship here, 41 Prestige, and the current Tag Team Champions. Brisbane Devil, I probably should have gone over these two. But we have Brisbane Devil and King Maliatota. Mal Maliatoa, sorry. These guys are pretty talented. They're not exactly very over, as you can see, but they're kind of our big Samoan... Yeah, I mean, they are Samoan demolition. So there are big Samoan guys on, on the roster that are probably going to be quite dominant, especially at the start of the series. Um, and I believe I believe they're going to do pretty well for us because they're both pretty talented. They're, they're definitely going to be a dominant tag team force going forward, at least from the start, until we decide that we have someone that's going to compete and take the titles off them eventually. Now, one thing I do want to mention, guys, is if, if you want to purchase TW 2020, you can do so with the link down in the description. Uh, it is an affiliation link, so you will be helping the channel out if you decide to purchase TW 2020. All right, so let's have a look. What else do we need to do? I need to think about stuff because 
We do have storylines. Uh, we need to have three storylines with more than 35 heat to meet the demands of our fans. And apparently we're currently failing that. Yes. All right, well, I'm kind of thinking that I would like to kind of get rid of the storylines, but at the same time, I mean, I haven't really done storylines as such on the Black Canvas Grappling series, so just having a little look around here. Okay. Well, anyway, let's just get into the first ever TV show for APW. Uh, let's also have a look at our backstage interns here. We've got Marcus Rush, who helped create a good backstage atmosphere, so I'm happy with that. Dexter Mattel, lifting the locker room, providing a free crate of drinks. And then this one looks like, ooh, never mind. Lenny Williams has taken Leon Namath under his wing as a protege. Okay, that's that's actually pretty cool. I want to have a look at Leon Namath because it kind of looks like he might be... All right. The rib was not successful. I do apologize about your ears there. All right, let's have a look at the... Well, we have a pretty good economy and a pretty good wrestling industry, although the wrestling industry is currently falling. That is 64, economy's at a 73 and rising. That's really good. It's going to be beneficial for us making our money back after creating that broadcaster. Okay, well, we're expected to pull 384 fa 84 fans. Uh, and I don't think, yeah, there's no, I mean, the smallest is 300. And then I think the next is 1,000. So... I think we'll just go with a generic venue. I'm not really too worried about it. And let's just book one show for this episode. It is the first episode, so it's going to be it's going to be relatively long. Anyway, um, as far as a main event goes, let's use let's go for a big main event. Considering, let's go for like a triple threat or something. Something big. Uh, let's have Christopher Gerard take on. I think let's go with Scotty Hampstead, who is currently our champion. And then let's go with Massacre in there as well. So they're both members of Goliath Global. And I think we'll give it like 20 minutes because all three of them are pretty high up the card. And Christopher Gerard is going to pull off a victory here, um, but he is going to pin Massacre. Now, I'm wondering if we can actually call the match. Because something we need to get used to is everybody's psychology. So 65, 72 there for Massacre. That's pretty good. And then 68. Yeah, so I think we're good. I think we are good. Uh, it is going to be a non-title match. It's kind of more of a... It's more of a, a handicap match, I would say, for Christopher Gerard. Um, but he does. Did I make Massacre the loser? I need to make Massacre the loser. Obviously, you don't want our champion taking a loss as of yet. Uh, actually, let me go to stables because who else is in? All right, so we have Reggie Tate in there as well. Uh, from what I can tell, Reg Reggie Tate's a pretty good talent as well from what I remember. As you can see, pretty good star quality, good sex appeal, good menace there as well. So I might actually change that main event. And we might take Scotty out and put Reggie in there instead. Uh, and then we can actually have Reggie take the pinfall instead of Massacre. I think that works out a little bit better. Okay, Reggie cannot call the match, so we'll change that as well. And we'll just script it, I think. All right, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Uh, what else do we need? Do we need any specialty matches? We need a storytelling match. 
and we need to advance at least two storylines per show. Okay, that's fine. We're also overusing Reggie a little bit because his push is kind of lower than the other two. And obviously the, the match length is quite high. Uh, but up next, I want to have our tag team champions. So Samoan Demolition. Uh, and I think they're going to get a victory over R&R. &R. Brian Rampage and Paul Reinhold. Obviously Rampage, Reinhold, R&R. &R. They're, they're a new tag team from the looks of it. And uh, they're going to get an opportunity, but it's not going to be uh, a very good opportunity, if that makes sense, because they're, they're kind of going to get smashed. I'm not even going to make it an open match. We'll just script it and make it decisive. Don't want to use Domination, because I don't really want to bury these guys. They're not very good, but they are very young. They're only 20, and I think 21, yeah, for Reinhold. Reinhold's a little bit better. Yeah, he's a little bit better. I've got 69 basics, so... Yeah, not too bad, but at the same time... I mean, Samoan Demolition are just going to go straight through them, pretty much. Uh, what else do we got? Let's go a singles match. Let's also exclude everybody that's been booked as well. Uh, and I think we'll give Alex McQuarrie a match. Maybe against Leon Namath? Now, I wanted to have a look at this guy, because I think he's probably one of the standouts... Needs a little bit of work on his sort of microphone performance and acting skills. Charisma is not too bad. Star quality is not too bad there either. Decent basics. I mean, the fundamentals are there, pretty much. Uh, he also has really good stamina as well, so... I think, yeah, I think he's going to be pretty good. And as you can see, he does have a manager in Max Forbes. So I think he can take on Alex McQuarrie. Um, I, we do actually have a face and heel divide, so I need to get used to that as well. So Alex is a face, and yeah, Leon is a heel, so that's fine. Uh, I do think we'll give the victory to Alex McQuarrie, and again, we do kind of need to look... Well, we, we can use angles to further our storylines, but I would like to, to look into our storylines a little bit and try and progress them as well. All right, so let's have a look at storylines. Obviously, this one's fine. Apparently, Scotty is supposed to be taking on Dingo Divine, so we'll probably do that for the first pay-per-view. Uh, we also have Barney Mason and Dexter Mattel going at it in a storyline. All right, so what I think we'll do that we'll do a match for these two on this card. Just a, a 10 minute match. So it was Barney and who was he taking on? Oh, Dexter Mattel. Um, so who's the face? So Barney's the face and then Dexter is the heel. So what I think we're going to do here is we're going to give Dexter the victory. But I think it's going to be a tainted victory, and hopefully that's not going to hurt Barney too much. Yeah, so there we go, tainted victory. And that'll hopefully set up a nice little feud between the two at a later date as well. Uh, we also might want to reduce this a little bit. Just so we have a little bit more time. So we're at 56. I think we can at least fit in two angles. So let's go with a... All right, Victor Goliath. And I guess we'll just go with Massacre. And I guess Reggie Tate as well. Um, and I think we'll just go Entertainment like that. And the other two are not going to be rated. So we'll do that angle, and that angle is going to come before the triple threat match, which, like I said, is essentially a handicap match. Uh, up next. Uh, let's have a look at storylines again, because what I could do... Uh, what I want to do is change alignments. Now, this is it's kind of a bit gamey, but I just really don't like alignments, because... It just... It, 
it's kind of pointless to have people aligned with other people. Uh, no, I want to do nobody. Alright. Yeah, so as you can see, none of them are aligned, but obviously they are aligned because they're in tag teams together. Uh, and what we can do is a menace angle for both of our Samoan Demolition members. And hopefully what that'll do is actually advance their storyline as well. Uh, I don't think it needs to be scripted for Menace. And it needs to be four minutes, I think. I'm not sure if it'll, it changes company to company. But I do know that it needs to be four minutes for Black Canvas, so we'll just make it four minutes for this one as well. All right, I think that looks relatively good. We're at 60, 65 minutes. Um, we might have to lower this main event as well. We'll go, we'll go down to 16 minutes and, uh, yeah, that's still not great because they're expecting only 60% of matches, uh, and a lot more angles as well. So I think we'll lower maybe all the match times down to eight minutes. Still not working. Okay. In that case, let's get rid of the first match and we'll do an angle for Barney Mason and Dexter Mattel. I think that'll work. And we might just put that before the Alex McQuarrie match as well. Or we can start the show off with it. So let's have Dexter. Actually, let me check if they can even cut an angle themselves. Again, this is me still kind of getting used to the the roster as well. All right, so yeah, Dexter can cut an entertainment angle. And where is Barney? Oh, so can Barney. Okay, they both can. So what we'll do is we'll book an angle. Uh, we'll have Dexter. And then we'll have Barney in there as well. Both rated on entertainment. Uh, and it's basically just them going back and forth with each other. And that is going to start off the show. Yeah. I guess we can go one more angle as well. Maybe a Christopher Girard angle. Or we could once again go with an angle for Scotty, Scotty Hampstead or Dingo Divine. Let's just go with a Scotty angle. Uh, and I think he, I think he can do entertainment as well. From what I remember. Uh, do we want to, yeah, we'll make it on Dingo Divine as well. Uh, but he'll be off camera, so that kind of works. And that's alluding to the pay-per-view match they're going to have for the Commonwealth title. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Do we want to maybe have like a pre-show match as well? Who have we got left? Let's have Nighthawk lose to somebody. Maybe Tyrant? Eh, maybe not Tyrant. What about... I mean, Suburban Legend is a really talented roster member as well. I don't want to see how he does. I'm assuming they're both faces as well. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Let's have a look at Suburban Legend. As you can see, he's, he's really talented coming from Raw. Uh, he's also got really good microphone and charisma and star quality. Uh, I think we're going to have to push him at some stage up into the major star or star categories. Oh, nice. Runtime error. Perfect. As you can see, we did get a runtime error. So I've gone back and unfortunately we didn't save after we finished this booking. So I had to go back, rebook in everything. Uh, I think I got it back to how it was. So let's now hopefully try and add that pre-match in. Uh, let's actually go by faces and heels. So I do want to go Suburban Legend, which is who we were talking about a second ago. Uh, and I think he can actually take on... Mm, I'm not sure who he can take on. Maybe Tyrant? Mm, maybe not. Maybe Felix, although Felix Harding is pretty good. This should actually be a pretty good match, I would think. 
let's let's actually let's kind of see how it does because it's probably going to beat most of the main show matches i would say they're both pretty pretty incredible wrestlers but i guess there's whoop free show there's just not really anything going with them at the moment now we do need some more time uh and in order to to kind of do that we need another angle so i think I needed to book in that Scotty Hampstead angle uh, to go on the end of the show. That's the one thing that I forgot to do. And then we have Dingo Divine. So let's get that one done as well. Five minutes. And of course, Dingo was actually off camera. So there we go. I think we are perfect now. Uh, obviously, Reggie's still, still also being overused and we do need a storytelling match so we'll make the Samoan demolition match a storytelling match and uh there we go we're in green so let's start the show uh we start off with a 31 for suburban legend defeating felix harding in 948 by pinfall with a legend killer and of course this is on the pre-show and apparently marcus rush could have done better as a road agent Interesting. We might have to get a new road agent. We then start the actual show off. Our first ever sort of TV show. Actually on a proper broadcaster. Well, not a proper broadcaster. It's on our own broadcasting network. And we actually get a 43. Which I think is probably a, a relatively good angle. And of course these two are currently in a storyline together. Um, we have the heel Dexter Mattel. Cutting a bit of a, a bit of a promo on Barney Mason. But then we do have Barney Mason trying to... Well, he's at least trying to defend himself. And I think we will actually have these two take each other on on the next TV show in episode two. We then move into our first match on the actual show itself, getting a 30. Where we have Samoan Demolition defeating r, &R in 743. When King Meliotoa pinned Brian Rampage with a Devil's Drop. Yeah, I mean, a pretty good performance is there from Brisbane Devil and King Maliotoa. And, uh, yeah, I mean, both teams actually got Tag Team Specialist bonus, so that's, of course, going to help out the, the match rating itself. And then we go into a pretty menacing angle from both members of Samoan Demolition, being Brisbane Devil and King Maliotoa. It's a 41, which I think is... Probably what we should hopefully expect from most of our angles at this early stage. We then go into a bit of a better match, getting a 35 here, where we have Alex McQuarrie defeating Leon Namath in 8.15 by pinfall with a super kick. I do like Alex McQuarrie. I think I want to try and push him up. Nice 38 in-ring performance there from him as well. Bit of, a bit of a nothing match, but more of just me sort of testing out Leon Namath. Uh, also worth mentioning, he didn't become a protege when I had to, to reload the game. So that kind of sucks a little bit. Our next angle does really well, but this one is kind of expected. We get a 61 for Goliath Global's angle. But of course, Victor Goliath, massively over in Australia. And then of course, he's also got really, really good entertainment stats. He can cut a promo, that's for sure. And that is why he's... Probably the best manager we have, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, also probably the best talker we have as well. And of course, he's basically just hyping up both Massacre and Reggie Tate prior to the prior to the main event, which is a triple threat. And he's basically just trying to get them on the same page so they go out there and absolutely destroy Christopher Gerard. Now, the main event does much better than the other matches, getting a 43. Uh, and as you can tell, definitely our best match on the card. And we have Christopher Gerard defeating Massacre and Reggie Tate in 1555 when Christopher Gerard pinned Reggie Tate with a T-bone suplex. And yeah, Christopher also carried the match with a 52 in-ring performance there. I mean, pretty good to see Massacre with a 40 and then Reggie Tate just a little bit further behind with a 35. And apparently Massacre and Victor Goliath have great chemistry, so the manager... The manager-wrestler combination there really working out. 
yeah, happy with that. That's a pretty good main event, but we do have one more angle left. And it gets a 52 for our Commonwealth champion, Scotty Hampstead. And of course, he cuts a an angle on to Dingo Divine, in which he sort of puts over the fact that the two are going to come together. So uh, I think we'll try and get that pre-booked in as well for OzFest. And I think I want to do a 20-minute match, if possible. And of course, it is going to be the champion, Scotty Hempstead, taking on Dingo Divine. Probably not going to be a massive sort of storyline going forward, but at least for this first month, I think it it'll it'll fit, and I think it'll definitely work as well. And of course, Scotty is a massive unit, 275 pounds. Uh, Commonwealth title on the line there. Pre-booked in for OzFest. Perfect. All right, let's finish the show. And we get a 39. Losing us popularity in one region, which is, of course, New South Wales, which we, I think we're at 42, from what I remember. And uh, it did increase our popularity in the other six regions, though. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but I guess in a way it's good. We're, we're gaining more popularity in those other regions. And obviously our popularity loss, while it's bad, you know, we'll, we'll gradually get better and better at booking these shows. And obviously people will start to get over as well. So I'm not really too worried about it. I think a 39 is not too bad for our first episode of TV for a, a first, you know, a first time company going on to their own broadcaster. All right, let's have a look at this email here. The viewing figures. It, oh, we got a 0 0.02 TV rating. Just over 20,000 viewers. That's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, one other thing I want to check is finances. So our broadcast revenue was about 1,300. Now, that's pretty low. Because remember, we are spending... I think it's 2,400. I'm not sure if that's just... I think it's just per month, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure. Either way, we're, uh, we're kind of losing money at the moment. Yeah, it's interesting. The show costs are pretty big. That seems to be our big sort of problem at the moment. Hopefully we don't run the company into the ground. Either way, I guess we'll uh, we'll have to wait and find out. Anyway, that's going to be the end of episode one, guys. If you enjoyed the episode, please smash the like button. Uh, I would really like to reach 50 likes on this episode. It would be, be pretty amazing, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And of course, these episodes will be coming out uh, probably daily, but I don't want to hold myself to that. Pretty much every other day, uh, we might throw in some Road to Glory episodes in there as well. If you haven't checked out that series, it's back on 2016. Uh, and it's pretty incredible. It's a pretty incredible series. Anyways, apart from that, guys, take it easy and goodbye.